All right, well, back to reading. I don't know what happened to my computer. It just decided it wanted to go away. All right, so let's go back to where was I? If Jesus is not your savior, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. All right. Well, that concluded what I wanted to read there. That's so weird. I'm going to have to like, upload both videos, I guess. Okay. Well, let's go to Psalm 32. It says, the joy of forgiveness. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And this is also a Psalm of David. David wrote a lot of the Psalms. And as you can tell, David's life was not perfect at all. He did not live a perfect life. At times he was very sinful. But he always repented. He always asked for forgiveness. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute in iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you. In my, iniqu my iniquity, I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with a bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for God, all you upright in heart. Okay, so David is acknowledging that he has sinned against God. And it's kind of like, it doesn't say this in my study part, but this Eight, I don't have eight. It's kind of like this is God speaking. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. So it's kind of like a, I would think, a little bit of a back and forth conversation of David speaking about blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. And so David himself went through a lot of hills and valleys. And he's the one that wrote, I think, let me make sure. Yeah, he, he of course wrote 
the Lord, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He wrote that too. Well, let's get into the study part of this. Let's see what my, what the man that wrote the study part of this. Oh, you know what? It's not a man, it's women. This is a women's study Bible. Okay, where does 32 start? Okay, 32-1-2. The blessedness of forgiveness is celebrated in this penitential psalm of thanksgiving. Such forgiveness comes by confessing sin, not denying it. Three words describe sin. Transgression, rebellion, miss the mark or go wrong, iniquity, which is moral crookedness or perver perversion. The threefold expression of forgiveness also indicates the completeness of God's forgiveness. Forgiven, lift or take away, covered, hide or conceal, does not compute, oh, does not impute, count or reckon. Such forgiveness comes to the individual who, though at one time refusing to have his sin covered, then honestly confessed it to God. See, okay. So this is the deal. We hide nothing from God. Our sin is not hidden from God. We hide absolutely nothing from God. So we might as well confess our sins because we're not hiding anything from him. He has seen and heard it all. So let's continue here. This proverb of wisdom presents two ways. The way of sorrow for those who persist in their sin and the way of blessedness for those who confess their sin and trust in the Lord. The choice between life and death. And so I talk a lot of times about we have two choices. We can follow God. We can follow God's ways. We can accept his son and follow his son. Or we can follow the world and we can follow the enemy because our enemy is of the world. So we have two choices. One of them leads to heaven and eternal life. And the other one leads to hell and eternal damnation. And there's only two choices. There's no middle ground. There's maybe I'm good enough. Maybe I've done enough good. Maybe God will, you know, there's not. There's not. But Jesus came and died to forgive all of our sins. Like I said, a while ago, past, present, and future sins. Jesus died for them all. He died for every sin we will ever commit. He has already died. He has already paid the price. But what we have to do is we have to repent. We have to ask for forgiveness. That's what we have to do because we're not perfect and we are not going to be perfect in this world. We are going to be far from it. It is going to be a struggle to stay on the right path, but it should be because the rewards at the end are so worth the struggle. All right. Well, that concludes 32. Tomorrow night, we'll do 33. I have to finish something that I started today. I, gotta, I have to do some, some things when I get off of here. After I take care of Seth. Okay. How do we want to do a salvation message? Hmm. We talked about forgiveness. Let's do... Oh, that's, a, that's the list that I'm always looking for. I found my list that I'm always looking for. That 
of how to do my report, the steps to do my report. I don't know what all that is. Who knows? Who knows? All right, let's do this one. Between you and God. Okay. Where's the beginning? There we are. Okay, there's the beginning. It's hard to line things up with two cameras. Hopefully my computer just doesn't decide to blank out again. I don't know what happened. Okay, our sin separates us from God, just like David. David got separated from God when he was in sin. His relationship with God was not like this because God's holy and he's not going to stick by us like that while we're in sin. Our sin separates us from God. The light on the right represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving and has provided a way for salvation. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin, separated from God. Sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Jeremiah 17, 9, the Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23, apart from God, apart from God's grace, man is without hope. So again, this is man over here in their sin. And this is God, perfect and holy in every way. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. 1 Peter 2, 24, 1 Peter 3, 18. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have er eternal life. John three sixteen. There is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for sin. That's what I was talking about. We cannot be good enough. We are not good. We have to accept Jesus. If we could, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin. So here's a picture of Jesus on the cross. He died for all of us, not just Christians. He died for everyone. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. And there's the picture of that. And then there's the picture of risen Jesus. Okay. Jesus is risen three days later. God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. And so the next part is Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty. I just realized this is the one that somebody drew on. You see the God and the, I don't know, they drew something up there. I got this from church. Only Jesus has paid the penalty God demand, demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. 
but just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sins and give us God's gift of eternal life. Okay, I'm gonna find I gotta find where the next part is. Okay. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for sin is eternal separation from God, but Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in Him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Romans 3.22 are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? And then this part, you can, you can trust in Jesus for your salvation. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. If you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, tell God by praying something like this. So I'm going to do this prayer and I'm going to give you some space to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Remember, it is not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10, 27, 28, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. So the very last part of this are symbols of how you can grow spiritually in your faith of Jesus Christ. Because you were saved by the precious blood of Christ, you should follow God and learn to please him. Here are some of his requirements for you to grow spiritually. So we have the heart symbol, love God in all people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that is in Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And then you have the praying Pray to God constantly, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Study the Bible, God's word daily. Start with the Gospel of John. Read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2.2 2. 
and then meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking our own assembling together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10, 25. Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16, 15. So again, if you invited Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. And this is an E3 resource. This is not anything that I made. Angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his only son. Welcome to the kingdom family of God. All right. Well, I believe that's all I am supposed to read tonight. Some of the things that I did read to you, uh, coincidentally, I read in my quiet time this morning. But God wants me to encourage you with a quiet time. Do spend some time with him. You don't have to read books of the Bible at one time. Like that flyer said, just read one chapter. Just read one chapter. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it and grow closer to God. Learn to walk in his ways and not the ways of the world. All right, so number six, 24 through 26, is um, God's blessing to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. All right, I am going to pray one more time. And I am going to get off of here. I have my unashamed bracelet on today. I'm unashamed of the gospel. I need to make some more bracelets. I have all the stuff to make them. I just, now I don't want to do it. So I'm going to have to start making myself do it. I don't like to waste money. God, we just come before you and we are so thankful, God, that you are our God, that you love us and you have always loved us. You even loved us when we were sinners and you sent your son to die for us, God. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and all the things that he did for us on the cross and all the things that he does for us daily as our shepherd. He's always with us. He never leaves us. Thank you, God. God, I just pray that you would bless people that come here, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, that they would feel your presence, God, that you would lead God and direct them, that there would be some special time that they could spend with you. I so enjoy the time that I spend with you every day. God, and just teach us more and more about your word and how to walk in your ways, how to walk in righteousness, how to repent of our sins, God, when we do find ourselves sinning, and how to help others, how to testify of all the goodness that you've done in our lives, God. Help us to share with others. Help us to encourage others to get through hard times, God. Help us to be more in your presence this year, God. And God, we just pray again for all the things. But God, we trust you. We do trust you with everything, God. We trust you with all that we have, all that we will ever have. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Oh, I'm sweating. My <laughs> family. My fan got flipped over today. I'm sweating, but I'm fixing to get off of here. So I will turn my air conditioner on when I get off of here. So much love. Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome Saturday tomorrow.
have an awesome Saturday, especially if you're off. If you have to work, it's okay. Uh, I used to have to work on Saturdays, but it's okay. I will be working tomorrow. I'll be finishing something that I started today. All right, so much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.